But, okay, we're still recording here, and we're, we're, we're doing this. My guest is Colleen. Somebody want to know why you were wild. What, what, what's wild about Colleen? As if I, um, as if I, I couldn't I, get it. But. <laughs> It, it, it really stems from the fact that I'm five foot four, 105 to 110 pounds most of the time, and I'm fierce and mighty in, in protecting people uh, smaller than myself or, or less able to do so for themselves. And I've been that way since I was a child. I'm a champion of the week, always have been. Um, and uh, so it seems like, uh, you know, we would all call a chihuahua going after a great Dane uh, like a wild animal. It doesn't understand the size difference and the danger involved. And I have a approach life like that and so from the perspective of the, the, the my uh, the, all the people watching me uh, from spaceships considering who's going to be selected to be a vessel for for the ascended ones uh, Gaia recommended me for being a good teacher the, the Pleiadians selected me for being a fighter and uh, and for that wild side because uh, my tenacity knows no bounds and they knew I wouldn't quit and so it was kind of a nickname that slipped into the consciousness and the web bot picked up on it before I ever even heard about it. And, um, you know, it was just a series of things because it was just a series of different things. I mean, I, I've lived the church lady life for, for decades, and, you know, we're talking being butt, buttoned up collars to the neck and long hair that I didn't uh, I didn't style and use hairspray on and didn't wear makeup. I, I was a raw woman for many years. I lived like a Pentecostal woman, although that wasn't the religion, uh, not even remotely. I was in a legalistic uh, Christian religion that... Um, the law was was the king, and uh, and they knew the difference that the law was love and the ordinances were against mankind. The ordinances were, were given by Yahweh. That's the guy that told us to stone one another to death um, if people stepped out of line in any kind of way whatsoever outside the guidelines of the law itself. The law was meant to spread peace and love, cooperation and harmlessness, and Yahweh made it exactly the opposite, a terrifying rule master that would get you killed or tormented or lose your freedom your family, etc., even your community, if you behaved in a way that was somehow not sanctioned by the community or the ordinances that Yahweh set, set up there. And they're pretty severe, and the, the Islamic nation still employ some of these things, cutting a thief's hand off, uh, gouging people's eyes uh, out, you know, uh, these kind of eye-for-an-eye eye things that were very barbaric, that were, that were introduced by a very barbaric uh, person. Yahweh is just a person from another planet in the, in the Milky Way, on the other side of the core itself, not visible from Earth and any of our satellites, but it is nonetheless there, and he is from there, and he was selected by the Confederation uh, uh, Forces of the South to run this place, and his, uh, his um, cohort was Yeshua. Those two clowns have been running this thing for over 3,000 years. Uh, it just got the mantle handed over a month ago. Uh, Yahweh and Yeshua are no longer in any kind of seat of authority. They may serve as advisors only, perhaps. But uh, hopefully, wiser folks have uh, have taken over the reins, and uh, and you know, and things with the, the what we would call the Illuminati and, and all of that will will settle down and get a lot more rational and sane and fair-minded, uh, you know, because they've been learning from humans while they've been living with us the last ten thousand years, and they've been taming, and that was the point. We need to accept the fact that these people are now uh, ready to to change their stripes and be, and be a help, and we need to make it easy, exceedingly easy. No matter how criminal, no matter how criminal, how vile, how unimaginably horrid uh, the, the behaviors that people are going to step forward and admit that they participated in, because we don't know why they participated in, in it. you got to understand that this was a religion for them, taught them from their infancy, okay? They are just as innocent potentially of their mistakes as we are. We too were born into lies and have made our share of mistakes and mispresumptions and miscalculations about this place as well. And if we can't be forgiving towards them, why should anybody be forgiving towards us? The mistakes are exactly the same. And comparing and contrasting and saying, well, this is more egregious than that, hey, harm is harm. You're either being harmless or you're not. Now, Period. You, you've mentioned Palladians. You're talking about UFOs. You're talking about aliens are are you are they are the aliens you're talking about are they the people that have been around well, I'm gonna tell forever? you what, I'm gonna tell you what the I am my father told me uh, through this woman yesterday is that those terms each see an alien are 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 are, are, are a, a, these are phrases that separate 
like them and us, and there is no them and us. Right. They put us You're here. Right. We are them. They are us. This is our family back, okay? This is our family. We've had our back all along, allowing us to evolve, uh, you know, as peaceably as possible while commingled with, with entities that, that were a lot less evolved than ourselves. And you know what? You, you know, we, we bring them up. They brought us down, but we've brought them up. So it took us longer to get where we almost were a long time ago. But look at how many more people we have that we're bringing with us now than, than we would have then. So to me, it's worth the ride. It, was, it took longer, but more souls are coming. So celebrate it. Don't lament it. <laughs> well, I've, I've pointed out that what we really, we're in a pretty much eternal war, good against evil. And, uh, not e no, not eternal, not eternal. We're exiting. Uh, the, in fact, I think what some are saying is that the um, that entire vibration uh, it, it will dissolve when we leave it. Like there won't be anybody caught in it. it it's going away. So it's it, I, that it, and that resonates with me. We'll see what happens and what what the divine ones tell us when it's all said and done. But um, I, I have a I have a uh, you know I. I, I, I like the idea, and I hope it's true, that suffering for all ends, that for everybody, that this is the end of it. This experiment is over with, and nobody else is going to attempt it. All that needed to be learned has been learned. It served its purpose, and we're done with it. Goodbye. <laughs> well, that's hopefully. And, and But, you know, the way to it, the, what we're planning here, what we're planning on doing in Liberty Villages, this is marketable. This is probably the most mar marketable <laughs> thing. And, and by you know, you know I, I, I'm a firm believer in solving, you know, more more than one problem at a time. Me too. And and for the getting away and relaxing, I'm suggesting that uh, on your basically on your way to Texas, you stop by here, you get on the back of that Harley with me, and we go up and, and, and view the factory for the teepees and the urch. Oh, cool. And meet the owner personally. and work bring out my camera, and, yeah. And work out all of the deals to uh, put all this up, up on the website. I haven't had the prices or anything like that yet because I haven't, uh, I just you know, I haven't got a place to set up the sample yet. I haven't got a place to do that yet. Now we do. Now we do. And and there's more. There's we've got the place in Sturgis. We got the place in Texas. And Pastor Jake Wade's got property right around the corner from us if we need it. So uh, uh, once we do one, once we do one, and, and we've got uh, we'll have uh, uh, the gentleman I had on about two days ago uh, about the uh, talking about. The, uh, he's an auditor for the Indians. Now, my plan... Okay, Clay, Clay I'm going to interrupt you just for a second Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, and, tell pe and tell people that even if they don't want to live an, uh, in a village and leave their home and they're happy where they're at, but they'd like to support the expansion of this kind of concept, they can donate. We really need $10,000 uh, to build our first generator and, and do what we need to do to, to create the first uh, uh, prototype village. And um, and so, you know, donations are, are always uh, received. Clay, you probably do. I know I do at PayPal, cmfon at shrewest.net. Um, you know, PayPal is a marvelous way to transfer funds and, and to fund something that, even though you're not going to personally participate in it, you at least want to put your energy into seeing it succeed. So um, I invite people to to get involved that way. Ten thousand dollars is not a big number for something as big as we're going to do. So um, you know, enough people kick loose some some change. We, we'll get this done pretty handily. And, and by the way, you you already have Mystery Babylon, my nonfiction book. You have that up on eBay. eBay. Yes, I do. It's up on eBay, and that's just the first. You have other works that are going to go up there. We're also going to market the TPs from there. From uh, It's Clayton R. Douglas and Wild Colleen Thomas is the name of our eBay page. Separate each one of those words by a dash, the upper dash, not the lower underscore. And uh, you will land on our page and see what products we're going to bring to market. Right now, Mystery Babylon is the only one there. Uh, I, I took the liberty this weekend of spending my time with real human beings, <laughs> and I ended up spent, spending two days with these very spiritually awakened, aware, and enlightened people, and it was a marvelous delight and only whet my appetite even more for what I'm about to do with my life, yeah, and I'm going to pick up I play see, and head to Texas. <laughs> what I see Liberty Village being, I see us sitting there in Texas, I see people from all over the world coming there.
to have breakfast with. And you can do that right now, right now in Tucson, right now, Saturday, you can come out and you can have breakfast with me over at uh, the Hungry Fox restaurant on Broadway. I'm advertising that right at the top of my magazine. <laughs> and in about two or three weeks, it'll be me and Clay there having breakfast together. That's right. And, and folks, by working together, you supporting me. Right now, I, I need I need $200 today. I, after the show is over, a guy's coming over to try to tune up my computer. I have no idea what he's going to charge me. But I found mm. somebody that would come out and, and has the ability to fix the computer and, and uh, put in the right uh, the right uh, equipment on here to to, to make mm -hmm. it make it hum. We're we're I've got, <laughs> I've got five I've got five lines open right now, and so we just need a little bit of tune up. But it, it's it's this kind of thing, you know, well, I need $200. I need $200. I need $200 to do this, to do this, to keep this uh, to keep right. this going, to keep this going. And and that's why I'm selling books. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, it's not just that I'm looking for donations. It's, it's, it's that we've got, I've got, I've got over a million dollars. And you're going to be, you are going to be my agent here. <laughs> We've got over a million dollars worth of properties to sell. We've got movies, we've got soundtracks, and, and I've, I've, I've even got more than I've told you about. One of, my, one of my friends that I've written about, I've written about him in the uh, screenplay for the Lucifer legend. Oh. His name's Mike Jones. He's got a movie, three quarters done, and uh, he's got two albums. And he's written in my book. Cool. I, I wanted to, I wanted to tell folks that the, the, the Lucifer Chronicles that's written as a screenplay would make an excellent book um, and would make an excellent movie. And it's written from the perspective of uh, the, the light bearer. Uh, Clay's taken the time to research the uh, the, the ancient text on, on who this character uh, is supposedly to be. And uh, what he discovered is, in reality, the, the light bearer <laughs> was not well received by the dark ones on this planet and, and from their perspective he's the enemy uh, trying to take away everything that they've built for themselves so they portray him as an evil one although the light is of course divine and carried by the son of the I am uh, the Archangel Michael Metatron also known as the Messiah Isu Emmanuel which means God with us now known amongst the, the divine family as Sananda which means God is one which was always always where he was trying to lead us is to the oneness of the all that is and join the divine family and become a galactic society um, working in cooperation with cultures from around this universe and others. Well, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to work in harmony. Well, I'm trying to follow the, uh, the Bible. Is a, is a great history book and it's a great lesson because it, uh, it warns you about tyranny. It's been happening throughout history. Never been easy to be free, has it, Colleen? No, not, not in the last 10,000 years since the, uh, since the hostile takeover and occupation of this world by the, by the, um, the Jurassic uh, types and lesser evolved human types. Uh, the, the Anunnaki uh, group was led by um, uh, basically humans just like us, uh, but, you know, more barbaric than we when they got here. The people that were here were actually quite divine and ready to ascend, but these uh, lesser evolved creatures came here and changed uh, how people were feeling, literally, terrifying them by a, by, by a murderous war that killed tens of millions of people on this world. And so because the terror uh, entered here, uh, the whole system descended further and did not ascend even though it was on the brink of it before. I think I think this the war that you're talking about that, that happened thousands of years ago, there's still traces of it in India, nuclear war, you know, six thousand years old, still radioactive. And and we've got the uh, asteroid belt that uh, there's uh, speculation of that was a planet once and uh, it it was destroyed in this war. What uh, what is your opinion from from the Pleiadian point of view, from your point of view here? I have to say, it, I was going to say you have to take it from my Pleiadian point of view yeah. um, because 
I don't have everybody's ear all the time, and when I do, it's always family business. It's never humanity business that they discuss with me. I'm not an official spokesperson for this world. Um, I'm ju I was just an awake and alert uh, American citizen seeing what was happening on her world and trying to uh, alert her comrades to, to what was happening so that they could join in, in a, a rather effortless task of simply imagining a different outcome every day, make it a prayerful habit every day to envision this world at peace. And, um, and you know, and the angry people, uh, not angry, uh, you know, envision them with the information they lack to put their minds at peace. Will for people to have what they need to be at peace as a daily habit, and the world will become that. Our words every day, because we, the, the, the system that causes, that, the system that creates for us that which we say is indifferent to the context in which we say it. It does not have that capacity. Your words go out, and then it thinks, okay, she wants that word. What, well, what, if, if, what if that word I keep using is that I'm so angry about the situation? Well, what's the situation going to keep delivering to me? Angry. More things to be angry about, because the system heard me say angry. Oh, she wants angry. Okay, here comes more to be angry about. So keep talking peace. Keep talking, talking love. Keep talking prosperity. Keep talking freedom. Keep keep talking the constitutional as given to the white people from the Iroquois, my people, the Lyrans, okay? Keep talking constitutional minded because that's being spiritually minded. That's about being equity minded, fairness, equality, you know, cooperation, uh, community mindedness, treating ourselves as an organism instead of an island in a sea of other islands that are indifferent to one another. I live in California. These neighbors don't walk out and say hello to one another. They, they live here indifferent to the, to the people that live around them as if they don't exist. And if they make themselves apparently exist, they want to sue you you for having made a show of yourself somehow being there on the block. It's insane. I want out of this. We're, you're, you're coming out of it. We are coming out of this. We are coming out of this. And, yes, we are. And, and, and folks, you, we need your help to do this. We need your help to do this. Nothing of this happens alone. And, and let me, if you're... Hey, if Clay, you're Clay, 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 you got somebody warning you, Crusade radio feed went down. Radio feed went down? Okay. Let me Crusade, go. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but that's that might be pretty important. Right. I think I, I think I lost. Uh, let me look. Uh, let me look here. Okay, we've just got uh, we got 12 minutes left, and if Crusade Crusade did go down, let me see if we can get it back on. Okay, did we get it back here? Okay, it's ringing, it's ringing, but is it picking up? Push out. <laughs> too bad I can't hear it ringing. Yeah, I think okay, I no, no, ringy it's, dingy. It's, 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 <laughs> ringy dingy. <laughs> okay, I think we're back here. I think we're back on okay. Crusade, folks. And All right. thank you, thank you for the heads up. You know, this is the worst about this. everything works smoothly if you work together. If you've got some help, if you've got if you've got a little bit of backup, you know. Oh, oh shit! I didn't know. You know, my motorcycle broke, man. My motorcycle did break, and I made uh, I made uh, you know I, I had some people make some donations, so I was able to uh, to spend three hundred bucks on the bike. Now we got new tires. Now we got new uh, new clutch. Everything's running. We're ready. Hey, Clay, for, we're ready for the trip. We're ready for the trip up to. Colorado. Yeah, we're ready for the trip. I just want to make a point while you're talking about living donations to donation. People need to understand that it's not like we're sitting at home being lazy, not trying to make a living, and doing this instead of having a real job. And there's people that accuse me of that all the time. What they don't realize is once I went public uh, in being support of the fact that there are that we are not alone on this planet, that there are uh, people from other worlds here to lend a hand and join us and pull us up. And uh, and so I was branded a crazy person. So even though I'm a medical professional and a businesswoman, and, and, and you know that everybody nowadays, when the HR departments go and do a background check on you, uh, and this is after I've been through successful interviews, and this has happened to me time and again. I have met presidents, CEOs. Uh, you know, board members, etc. Everybody loves me. Wow, she's a dynamo. And then it goes to HR. Oh, she's crazy. She's not on her meds. And they won't hire me. They think I'm unstable because I believe I believe in aliens and ET. Like it's a belief system. It's not a belief system. We're not talking about Santa Claus here. We're talking about physical evidence of what's real. 
and people in denial are denying me the means of earning a living because of their biases. So I'm going to go live off the land. I have no choice. This planet hates me. <laughs> that's, that's what they've been doing to me for the last seven years. They've been trying to deny me any access, any any oh. help. You know? I should take that back. There are people on this planet out there that I've never met, but I get a lot of loving, supportive email. I'm going to take back what I said. There's, I found a lot of love in strangers here that I never found in the people that I could touch flesh to flesh. And I appreciate um, the affirmation that love is out there from all of you who have affirmed it to me and validated my so-called insanity by saying that you share in it and have similar experiences. And until we can um, you know, really uh, encourage one another by admitting to this strangeness, admitting to what people will say, I would call insane and not worrying about what they would say about it they'll realize that I am a growing majority people like us are a growing majority not a freaked out minority <laughs> now, you know you, you brought something else up that I think is important I, I, I had a guest on years ago and got a book I sold her book her name was Glenda Green she was out of, you can you can google her she was out of uh, uh, out of Texas a lot of good people come out of Texas, and uh, that's uh, where we're going to be. We're going to be a part of the Texas. Oh, Craig, uh, Crusade went down again with the time left. Do you want to bother with it? Nah, I, I just brought her back up again. I brought her back up again. Okay. It's, it's, it should be back up now, and we'll just see if it lasts. Uh, but uh, the uh, Glenda Green wrote a book talking about Jesus. said Jesus came in and sat down in her living room and talked to her. And she wrote down everything he told her, and his whole message was about love. Now, now let me let me tell you what love is, folks. That is a high level of vibrational energy. And and you know the the whole I have studied magic for thirty five forty years. I have studied the science of magic, spelled with a K. And, and, and part of and that is the basis of every religion out there. It's how you communicate with the deity that holds our atoms together. And, and when you get down on a DNA level, on a molecular level there, you can take a look at your own DNA, and you've got your history there written for uh, about the last 100,000 years, right? Yep. And, 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 and you know, does that make me? Does that make me? You know, <laughs> because I understand this. I understand this. And the 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 the, the little guy with the bald head over there going nam ya ha ranga kill nam ya ha ranga kill the the Jew banging his head against that wailing wall or that Muslim got his ass uh, up in the air and his nose in the ground. They are all try attempting to communicate with a deity. And they don't even understand. They don't have to go through all that shit. Mm -hmm. You know. And so the the people, the the guys step in. The evil guys step in, and they control those churches and those religions. And they want to see us fighting with each other. Somehow we got to break that system by going. Hey, you know, we all believe red. We're all the same people. If we can eat, if we can breathe, and and and, and we can, uh, you know, we can live comfortably then there ain't no reason to go out and take somebody else's land, somebody else's property, somebody else's life. Mm -hmm. That's what we're really working for. It's And it's called love. You right. Know, and it's hard to do. It's really hard to do because I, I put up with these... With well, these, with you know what? Study, study the seven virtues. They really aren't hard. They really aren't hard. Uh, there's seven virtues and, and seven follies before mankind, and they can choose any any anyone at any time. So write the seven virtues somewhere where you're going to see them every day, and 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 focus on expressing that in every moment of your day. Um, you know, it, meet every moment with one of the virtues. You know, patience. <laughs> you know, it requires a lot of patience to live in this world. There's a lot of blockheads who aren't getting it, and approaching them in love, understanding, and appreciation for the fact that they've been living in a world that. Has has them mind controlled and they're not at fault and just give them a big old hug and move on to one that's not quite so blocked off well we've got new directions to move in and and what the what the, the liberty villagers does is take you to a different level if you think of it this way if you're growing your own food and you're producing your own energy and we've got the means to produce the energy and and two or three different ways <laughs> And, and you're living in an inexpensive structure that you can roll up and take with you if you need to go somewhere else or if you get your ass kicked out for being an asshole, you know. <laughs> and so, so what we're talking about right now, you, 
you send five thousand bucks, you got a TP. You got a TP. Now, what you do with that TP? Then you got to make a decision. Do you want to put the TP in and and become a part of this Liberty Villages spread around the country? The opportunities there. Uh, uh, structures that these teepees actually have solar panels and windmills on them so even if you didn't have power being generated at your community you could still be self-sustained and put that teepee up anywhere you want to you know live, live in isolation if you want to or with your own close you know group of friends and family uh, you know you don't have to set up a, a tent at our space we're just selling them and making them available but lots and lots and lots of self-sustaining type structures that are uh, eco-friendly and environmentally friendly and easy on the eyes lo low to nature even even earthen structures domes with you know they have to mow their roof but they don't have to pay air conditioning because they have year-round uh, constant 70 some odd degrees in the house that's right now now you know, folks, the, the advantage and the reason that, you know, I, I'm all for self-sufficiency. You can put a windmill in your house, you can put a generator there, you can put a solar generator there, uh, and, and, and you can sell electricity back to the power companies. You can actually make a living from your house if you follow our guidelines here. But if everything falls apart tomorrow, if these trucks don't run, if the supermarkets go empty, then, then, uh, and you all set up. You got your food. You got your. You got everything. And and you got a gang. Uh, Twenty people come through to to because they're starving to death. Are you capable of defending your property, your food, your family? You be, will be a lot better off if you're in a community dedicated to help each other, to defend each other. That's the whole point. And, and, and protecting together. the community. We're inviting bikers who, who know how to, to protect things. Um, and so, and, and of course, retired military, et cetera, not just retired, but people who did their stint and found a society not real welcoming for them. Every, every uh, they were, village. Those, pe those guys out there that are still suffering post-traumatic stress disorder in a community like this where they're not going to be stressed out for any reason will actually have space to heal and be surrounded by people who have done their own healing and, and can help them uh, heal spiritually, emotionally, and psychologically because they're damaged in all of those domains now. And that can be healed, though. And, and there'll be a lot of healers in this community. Trust me, these communities are going to attract metaphysicists like me who can heal and uh, who can do a lot of other things that you're going to enjoy seeing because they're pretty out there, and that every, science fiction stuff, what, what people like me can do now, and uh, more people will do these things, and they're going to get more miraculous, and this is going to be an exciting space, but these, these foretastes of people like me who kind of blink on and do something really miraculous for, for a while, and then blink back off, you know, who knows what I'm going to blink on and what I'm going to do next, you know, I've, I've stood on water, so, you know, maybe offline next time, and people will see me take off, you know, people will join me in the village, you, you don't know what you're going to get with Wild Colleen, folks. That surprises me all the time. You don't know, we're going to have people like you, people like me, traveling around the country, doing lectures, doing, uh, uh, promoting, uh, and promoting, we'll be promoting the Liberty Villages all around the country. And, and, you know, we'll be, uh, we'll be pulling our, our fifth wheel, and we'll be coming out there, you know, we'll set up the table, so you'll have the books available, you'll have the information available, and, and you'll be able to see the teepees. We'll set up, we'll set, we'll set, we'll, when we travel, we'll set up on the teepees, and so it ain't exactly roughing it. You know, guys? It really ain't roughing it. It's These are modern. These are very nice. And beautiful. And, They're beautiful and, to behold, because they glow at night when you light them from within it's just a beautiful I mean I, I can't wait to see you know hundreds of these and it's all like minded neighbors of mine and I can walk over for, to you know to somebody's tent or their teepee their yurt their RV their whatever temporary dwelling they set up there um, you know to, to join the community uh, I, you know to wander in and through you know different people's compounds and you know see listen to the music that they're playing that they're working on that the tourists are going to hear tomorrow uh, you know or the poetry or, or the, the spoken philosophies or you know just watching people develop up their craft and laughing and Hold playing on, and dancing. We're, we're, and we're out of time here. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Oh, okay. Colleen, our, my, my website is freeamerican.com. You can hear the show. You can get the links. You can see Liberty Village. Go there. I want to thank you all for listening. We need donations. Freeamerican.com. Play at freeamerican.com on PayPal. Make a donation. Buy a book. See ya, folks.
<laughs> Thank you, Clay. Bye. Okay, wait a minute. You stay. You you don't go anywhere. <laughs> oh, I don't go anywhere. Okay. <laughs> you don't go anywhere yet. Uh, uh, just hang on.